Hi, this is Kirby Summers, and I welcome you to the Epstein Project podcast. Well, listen, uh, the trial that we have all been waiting for is finally on its way. The Len Maxwell's trial is scheduled to begin November 29th, a few days away. And so, um, really, this is a trial that can go in any direction. I'm going to be discussing the different uh, angles it could take, what can happen. But first, like the video, like the video, like the video, and obviously subscribe. Okay, here we go. Um, Galen, as you know, has tried every which way <laughs> to get out of jail. Uh, she's requested and requested and then requested even more that she could be let out on bail, sort of, you know, lay low in the luxury hotel and then show up in court. Judge Judith Nathan, who has been presiding over the trial, uh, has repeatedly said, no, 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 you can't go home. So, all right, she has then turned around and and told her friend, uh, Daphne Barak, who Jeremy Roth Cushell, uh, who co-hosts my show with me, every now and then, and myself tracked down and discovered, lo and behold, she is former Prime Minister Bahut, Ehud Barak's um, cousin. She went ahead and blocked me on Twitter. So it's like, yay, another enemy from <laughs> the bad side of uh, the tracks, uh, you know, the side that decides that they want and can do anything with our children and with us and never be held accountable. So if they don't like me, props to me, you know? So, okay. Um, he has, uh, Galen Maxwell has presented herself through Daphne Barak's use of the Daily Mail, another vehicle that is at Galen Maxwell's disposal because as we have all seen, many photographs of the editor who has now had to step down, right? Jordy Gregg, sort of being very close to her, you know, indicating that perhaps there was more to their friendship. She seems to have a lot of friends, by the way, all in positions of power, but there's more to their friendship that meets the eye. And, you know, none of us would be surprised in any event in that article that Daphne Barak, her exclusive, and by the way, Daphne has known Galen Maxwell for decades. It was uh, Galen Maxwell who introduced Ehud Barak to Jeffrey Epstein, but that is another, <laughs> another uh, episode for another day. I'm going to stick to her trial. Um, she allowed uh, Galen Maxwell to speak to the public trying to garner sympathy. She's also given interviews to other Maxwell-friendly publications. I don't think there's any one publication mainstream that is not friendly to the Maxwells. Remember her father, although he was a robber baron, although he was a fraudster, although he was outed as being a Mossad spy, was in the publishing industry. And they all stick together and they're coming to Galen Maxwell's rescue and aid and assistance and giving her and her family, Isabel Maxwell, her brother, Ian Maxwell, a lot of time to play up the sympathy card. Well, Galen suddenly decided, okay, well, you know, it's not enough that she was basically showing up in court pretending to have a black eye because maybe somebody hit her. No, we discovered that was not the case saying that the guards had been very aggressive with her. Well, no, not really, right? Uh, so so now suddenly in these stories that have come out during the last couple of days, Glenn Maxwell claims to be playing peekaboo with the guards. I thought she didn't like them, so suddenly she's playing games with them. It doesn't sound quite right, but okay. This is a, a very unusual and bizarre person that we're all experiencing and it's really, it's so sad to know that the children experienced her and that 
vulnerable people experienced her. It's, it's, just, it's, it's just disgusting. But in any event, she also goes on to say that she has created a, an invisible friend. And she named the invisible friend some letter and some number. Again, it's like her mind can't stop being on spy mission. <laughs> All right. Well, is this her ploy to attempt to show the judge that she is bonkers and so that the trial cannot really take place because Glenn Maxwell has lost her capacity, her mental capacity? It's possible. You know, they've tried everything. And of course, if allowed, Glenn Maxwell will very, very quickly be on a submarine, possibly with her maybe husband, maybe not husband, the man who has been truly missing in action, Scott Borgerson, disappear in a yellow submarine. And frankly, there was a yellow submarine and they called it that. And it was a joke amongst the Maxwell crowd. These people are totally bonkers, bizarre. And truly, they have to all be, in my opinion, agents of some sort. It's just they're all just so peculiar and their links to different people are peculiar. So, you know, can they just go in there and say that, oh, well, Galen Maxwell's off her rockers. She can't really uh, comprehend. That can happen. Sure. Because after all, we have just seen President Joe Biden. And don't forget that in addition to Joe Biden, we've had Donald Trump and former President Bill Clinton and also President George W. Bush connected to this Epstein Maxwell tangled web. Uh, so the most recent news is that Biden is going to be promoting Judith Nathan. Yeah, when you know, anytime there's a promotion, like with Alexander Acosta, who was promoted and given a very, very interesting position in Donald Trump's White House, I become a little bit um, skeptical. Well, she is going to be promoted to the Second Circuit, which is just one level below the Court of Appeals. Very, very high position. Judith Nathan seems like a very nice person. Um, but to me, I look at this and say, is this a preemptive thank you for doing basically you know allowing her to walk away at the end of this case doing certain things i know that what judge nathan has already done which is detrimental to this case as far as us being able to hear names of some of the very powerful people politicians um the some of the world's most um, influential businessmen, world leaders, from reaching our ears and getting on paper in this trial, uh, Judge Nathan has told Glenn Maxwell's attorneys that well, you cannot really bring up Jeffrey Epstein's non-prosecution agreement. That's not a a clear line that doesn't mean that it's because Glenn Maxwell cannot claim this as being a reason for her to be uh, let out of jail get get an out of jail free card what this signifies to me is that they are keeping this in a very narrow area the other side of Glenn's side cannot bring up the non-prosecution agreement that the government struck with Jeffrey Epstein. It means that all of those names of these powerful people cannot be brought into court. And as an example, and by the way, Virginia Giuffre, our hero, is going to be testifying for the prosecution. Uh, she will be bringing up how Glenn Maxwell introduced her to Prince Andrew and how she was coerced to being intimate with Prince Andrew and other people. Um, she is not one of the four victims that are part of this K-12 
case against Maxwell. However, she will be a witness. What would be interesting is that when Virginia attempted to bring up Prince Andrew during her case against Ghislaine Maxwell, the defamation case that she began in 2015, which was settled in 2017, the judge didn't allow any mention of Prince Andrew. So it was stricken from the record and Virginia and her attorneys were not allowed to bring up Prince Andrew's name. That was interesting to me and it's always been on my mind. And it's very likely that Judge Nathan is going to do the same thing. We don't know, but anything is possible. We are dealing with an intelligence operation and all kinds of uh, machinations are going to be employed, strategies, you know, during the Iran-Contra hearings and, and other things like Watergate, there were certain things that were not discussed and were discussed behind closed door. Um, will that happen? It's possible, you know, anything can happen. Galen, while she has not offered names in exchange for a plea deal, the government hasn't offered her one either, but it doesn't mean that as the case begins on November 29th, which is next week, well, it could happen on day one and then it's over, right? Um, the other thing that can happen is the dates of the trial are a little bit unusual. It begins November 29th, it's expected to last until January 6th. Well, they started with over 600 um, jurors. By last week, November 15th, they began to go down and narrow that down. As of the 15th, I think it was narrowed down to just a little bit above 200. So at this point, they have selected their jury. These people are supposed to not be influenced by mainstream media, not be biased against Glenn Maxwell. Well, what happens during the Christmas break? During the Christmas break, these people are going to be mingling with their family members who are maybe going to be talking about the case, are maybe going to be exposed to mainstream media. And so when they go back to court, when the trial resumes after the new year, will this be declared a mistrial? And if that's the case, was it planned like this all along? Because, I mean, there's just so many oddities in this case that have really not happened one after the other after the other. Um, for any other case, uh, unless it, there's a fix, right? There's a, there's a fix. The other thing that can happen is that, oh, okay, well, Glenn is guilty of this, and she's guilty of this, and she's guilty of this. She's not guilty of this, and she's not guilty of this. And I will remind you of what her charges are in a minute. But because of time served, now remember, she has been in jail since July 2nd of 2020. The judge could turn around and say, time served, goodbye, you'll be on probation for a year to three wear an ankle bracelet or something like that, or just, and, and we know how effective that was with Jeffrey Epstein. It did nothing. You know, he was on a plane to New York. He was on a plane to, to France. He was on a plane to Israel. It did not stop Jeffrey Epstein, this one year probation, sort of house arrest after jail. It did nothing to stop him from doing his, and nobody enforced nobody enforced uh, the law when he broke his probation uh, rules. The same can happen with Glenn Maxwell. Um, so let me just remind you of what the charges are. Uh, let me just find them because I have them right in front of me. Okay. Um, 
I want to be very specific because this is a historical case. Okay, the charges. Initially, as you know, there were three victims. And the time period was between 1994 and 1997. A month or two or three later, a fourth victim, who is not a minor, was added to the case. The fourth victim is someone who, re, who, who lives in Florida and is in her 20s and has at least one child. The FBI, when they put out that big poster with the arrow, with Glenn Maxwell's picture, with Jeffrey Epstein, basically said that she was uh, charged with enticing a minor to travel to engage in criminal sexual activity transporting a minor with the intent to engage in criminal sexual activity, conspiring to commit both of these offenses, and perjury in connection with a sworn deposition. The perjury, the two perjury charges have already been separated from this case. And frankly, I haven't heard when those perjury charges are going to be heard. It's almost like, oh, well, we forgot there are two perjury charges. So, Initially, there were like six charges. I, this has sort of been reduced, but we have the new victim. So it's, all, it's always in a state of flux. A normal person who has been alleged to have committed these crimes, if found guilty, would do anywhere between 40 and 80 years. In Glenn Maxwell's case, with all of her inside friends, politicians who no doubt were blackmailed, right? Allegedly, because that is what we have all surmised from the Jeffrey Epstein, Glenn Maxwell, uh, trafficking of these minors and young adults, male and female, across borders for years. Um, so, I uh, yeah, with all of these people that are in positions of power, and if we recall in the Jeffrey Epstein case, it has been kind of properly uh, determined that it was Prince Andrew and former President Bill Clinton, both interesting figures because of their connection to Glenn Maxwell in this case as well, that it was them applying pressure to the United States government. Prince Andrew and Bill Clinton, no longer a president, right, who applied pressure to the United States government, which bore down on Alex Acosta, which resulted in that non-prosecution agreement, resulting in the, you know, go to jail to sleep and he could just do whatever he wanted during the day, who basically pressured the United States government into being lenient on Jeffrey Epstein. In this case, what are they going to do for Glenn Maxwell, who is much closer to Prince Andrew? Does he have that much control over our government? That's interesting because up until I realized what his role was in the Jeffrey Epstein case as it pertained to Virginia Giuffre and some other victims. He, he is alleged in court documents to have partaken of a group situation on a Jeffrey Epstein's private island that comprised 11 people. 11 people. So, um, you know, this guy has lived a debaut, de de just debauchery. It's just a, a, a life where there are no consequences for his actions where he could basically do anything he wants and apparently um, get away with anything he wants. So for him to have that kind of leverage over our government almost indicates to me that, um, well, who's, who's blackmailed? Is it our government that's blackmailed and our politicians? And does Andrew hold some of those cards because of his relationship with Glenn Maxwell? There are a lot of questions here that no one is asking. None of you are asking these questions. Certainly mainstream media, we can forget about them being uh, showing any kind of real 
in-depth reporting or analyzing of the people in this case and of what their influence might be based on what transpired behind closed doors. So I'm going to um, keep this short and I welcome your comments and um, hey, you know, it's, it's around the corner. Anything can happen. Do I want her to rot in jail like all of you? Yeah, I think most of the world wants that. But as we have seen, they have a PR machine, not just publicly, but behind the scenes, they seem to have control of our politicians, the court system, the judges. So let's, you know, let's keep watching this very closely because um, politicians and judges do rely on public opinion to sort of help them walk a straight and narrow line. Okay, that said, I will wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, it, I can't believe Thanksgiving is here. It's crazy. Like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe. You can find me on Twitter. And um, we'll do this again.